Welcome to this session. My name is Richa Saxena and I am a faculty member at Institute of Management Technology, Ghaziabad. I teach core courses and elective courses related to organizational behavior and human resource management. Today, I am going to talk about the role of experiential learning in management education. The first question that comes to my mind is, is management education same as other fields or other disciplines? If you ask me, probably no. Why? Because management as a field is more application oriented. It doesn't mean that you have to just gather knowledge and retain the knowledge. Rather, here you have to apply that knowledge in different situations. Second, it is also cross-functional in nature. So when you get a problem, business related, management related problem, it is not related to a specific discipline. Rather, it is cutting across the disciplines. Third, uh, which is also very important uh, related to management education is that you don't get a right answer to the problems. Rather, you get different scenarios and basis the scenarios, you get different type of plausible solutions. Uh, hence, and, and another major important uh, factor uh, related to management education is that it is more participant centric than teacher centric. That means the role of the teacher is more of a facilitator than the knowledge disseminator. Now given this, well, what do we mean by participant centered learning? Here the focus is more on developing skills and practices that are uh, helpful for the learner for a lifelong learning and they, they are able to uh, solve the problems in the independently in the long run. Secondly, it also puts the onus of learning on the participant only. Hence, when we are talking about management education, there is a need for more mature and andragogic uh, orientation for learning. And that is wherein uh, experiential learning comes into picture. Uh, there is a famous saying by Confucius, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember, I do and I understand. So experiential learning fits in the bill of the third part, which is I do and I understand. And uh, uh, if, if you talk about the course experiential learning cycle, once the, the learner gets the experience, gets the opportunity to reflect on that specific experience, thinks about what was happening, the possible consequences of the experience, and then finally acts on it. Now this gives a lot of opportunity for the learner to do the reflection, to do the analysis, to do the synthesis of what all is going on. If you ask me, I use several ways of uh, experiential learning while teaching my core courses or the elective courses. Um, as we all generally use the case-based uh, sessions or case-based learning, that is quite prominent in management education and I primarily use case-based learning also. Uh, apart from that, I make good use of uh, uh, small groups, breakout activities, even if I'm taking the virtual sessions, I give a lot of opportunities to the participants to, with small, small tasks, go to their respective breakout rooms and uh, 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 do the activity. Apart from that, there are little longer activities and exercises and games also which I deploy uh, in my different courses. Role play is another uh, experiential learning mode which I use. Uh, I also extensively use films and videos in my uh, courses. Now these films and videos, they are very very rich medium of understanding and it gives the audience or the learner a great opportunity to think through and to abstractize the learning which they are going to do. Simulations is another great way of doing the experiential learning. Uh, and I also use psychometric as instruments in my uh, courses because organizational behavior by nature as a, a field, uh, it has a lot of you know, psycho uh, psychological background. Uh, I give a lot of assignments and projects, live projects to the uh, students, wherein they are uh, uh, given the opportunity to work in groups and 
later on uh, 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 they also get uh, the industry exposure so so these are uh, i mean this is a wide spectrum of uh, mediums of uh, experiential learning now the question comes that how experiential learning actually works now it helps in reflection by the participant by the learner critically analyzing the situations and then synthesizing what all is happening uh, it gives ample of opportunities for the students or the learners to take initiative make decisions and be accountable for the results they are attaining now the result is active learning which is very important in the experiential learning uh it also provides opportunities for students to engage intellectually creatively emotionally socially or physically also and the result is higher learner engagement so that is how experiential learning actually helps the learners in being active and in being engaged in the sessions a design learning experience that includes the possibility to learn from natural consequences mistakes and successes so here the learner also gets the opportunities to make mistakes because mistake making mistake is also a, a good option of learning so so that is where in uh, experiential learning gives a lot of uh, scope to the uh, learners to make mistakes and learn from their own mistakes and the mistakes made by their peers also uh, if you look at the bloom's taxonomy uh wherein uh the different uh, uh levels of learning is there uh experiential learning cuts across the lower levels of learning from remembering and understanding to more mature ways of doing the things wherein it takes the learners to the next levels of analyzing evaluating and also creating their own models creating their own solutions creating their own frameworks which is wherein Uh, uh this is very useful for the mature audience like the management students we teach in our classes i hope this uh, session on uh, experiential learning will be helpful for you in uh, adopting this as a prime medium for learning for an mba student in your class thank you